Hi, everyone. Welcome to KQ. Mitch Hightower here with you, coming to you from our house in San Francisco, California, where today is in the mid-50s. It's clear, but it's breezy, and it's got a definite November chill in the air here in San Francisco. Welcome to the show. It's great to see all of you. I see there are people already busy in the chat. Suburban Barbecue, thank you so much for coming to join us. We really appreciate your continued support. It means a lot to us. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to come hang out and see what we're up to. And Sunset, it's always a pleasure to see you here. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your kind message and your messages and your thoughtful feedback and that you take time out of your day to come and see what we're up to as well. So thank you and welcome to the show. How did everything go yesterday? For those of you who celebrate Thanksgiving, what did you guys eat for dinner? I think if you looked at our Instagram, we posted several pictures in one of those flip through. I'm not sure what they call that. But uh, anyway, we posted pictures of what we did last night uh, for our dinner. And I see Karen has joined us from In the Kitchen with Karen. Hi, Karen. Happy belated Thanksgiving. I hope you and your family had a great day yesterday. And we certainly did. Uh, we had um, ham. We had ha honey baked ham. No one who lives in our house really is a huge fan of turkey. So we always get a honey baked ham every year for Thanksgiving. But most of the other accoutrements and side dishes that we had were traditional. If you saw our Instagram feed, you probably saw a bowl full of really yummy looking green beans. And I can tell you that they were supremely delicious. And I can brag about them all I want because I didn't make them. <laughs> Philip made them and they were so, so good. So if you're curious about how those beans came about, it was just actually quite simple. They were first steamed just in a basket in boiling water. And once they were nice and bright green, they were transferred to a saute pan and Philip uses balsamic vinegar for a glaze. And then he finished them once they were in the bowl with tiny, tiny chopped fresh bacon bits. And I can tell you they were supremely, supremely yummy. And we also had uh, some carrots that were roasted with apples and onion. We had some stuffing, uh, lots of other good things. And we had mashed potatoes. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with those in just a minute. Hey, Top Gun FM, so great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. It's always a pleasure to have you here. So we are so fortunate to have so many cool fans who love to come and hang out with us. And we certainly do appreciate all the support. So thank you very much, everyone, for being here this afternoon. What's on the menu today? Well, I mentioned earlier that we had mashed potatoes for dinner last night. And today I'm gonna turn some of those mashed potatoes into these cheesy leftover mashed potato mini waffles. Woot woot. These are super yummy. And I'll tell you every detail how to make this happen. It's really easy and it's really fun. I see Janine Johnson has joined us. Hey, welcome to the show. Great to see you today, Janine. We're so happy to have you here. And Double ZZ Ranch, woot woot. Hey, how's it going up there in Oregon? Did you have a good Thanksgiving yesterday? I'm sure Thanksgiving at your beautiful property is quite a spectacular event. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so as I said, we're going to be uh, making <clears throat> mashed potato waffles. So the official name of these are cheesy leftover mashed potato mini waffles. And the reason that they're mini waffles is because I'm going to use our Dash mini waffler. If you've watched some of our other live streams, you've seen me use this little appliance many times. And originally we bought it to make chaffles and it does an excellent job of that. A couple weeks ago, I did a recipe that we're testing for a uh, pre-recorded video and I used cauliflower rice to make a batter and then made cauliflower rice waffles, which were low carb, gluten free, super yummy and very easy. Now, none of those things are true for this. <laughs> These are mashed potatoes. They're full of butter. They're really yummy. And I'll tell you every detail how to put this together. Hey, hey, how's Hi. it going over there? Okay, Philip's over here in the kitchen. He's just coming up to check on me to make sure I'm not getting into too much trouble here all by myself. So. Let me tell you, let me give you a little close-up of these. These are super fun. These are just mini waffles from the Dash, like I said, and we're using primarily mashed potatoes and cheese and a few other ingredients. These are actually really, really easy to put together and they're super yummy. 
it it kind of reminds me of a latke, but it's not fried. And I think that we we make potato pancakes and latkes uh, whenever we have leftover mashed potatoes. Which, since we're doing low carb, isn't as often as it once was. We we only eat potatoes for special occasions, but this is one of those special occasions. I think it's going to be worth the extra calories. Hey, Texas food fan has joined us in the chat. Welcome to the show. Happy belated Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for taking time out of your Friday to come and hang out with us today. Usually, as you know, if you've been following our channel, we do a live every Tuesday at noon. And on Friday, we most of the time have a pre-recorded episode ready to go. But this week, we decided to do a live because we thought it would be fun to take something we had left over Thanksgiving, from Thanksgiving dinner and show you how to repurpose it into a lovely snack. Hey, I see Gail Southern Living has joined us in the chat. Hi, Gail. Welcome to the show. Happy belated Thanksgiving. We appreciate you being here with us this afternoon. Great to see you. So if you missed the very beginning of the show, I'm going to show you how to make these cheesy leftover mashed potato mini waffles. And I'm calling them mini waffles because I'm using the mini dash waffler. If you're not familiar with this product, it's widely available and it actually works really, really well. We've been using this for about a year now. Like I said earlier, we bought it originally to make chaffles. It makes lots of lovely products, including these mashed potato waffles. These, I <laughs> before the show started, I was watching another live stream from our friends in Canada, Maddie and Kiki. If you're not familiar with the Maddie and Kiki channel, I'd encourage you to check those talented young ladies out. They are super fun. So while I was watching their live, I made a batch of these and the recipe actually makes a total of six. As you can see here, there's only four. That's because I ate two of them already. <laughs> they are so, so yummy. So if you're a mashed potato fan and you like to make potato pancakes or lockies, this is another way to use mashed potatoes to get a similar flavor profile. The texture is a little different because they're, you know, crunchy and really crunchy actually. And I've used chives as a seasoning agent today. You could use scallions, you could chop an onion. You know, you can add a lot of different ingredients to these to customize them for yourself. You could also put in some bacon, you know, whatever you've got on hand, toss a little bit of it in there. So the ingredients for this are listed in the description below the video that you're watching right now. And also the cocktail that I'm going to make for you today, the ingredients are also listed in the description below. So don't worry, we are going to get boozing before this show ends because, hey, a live stream in the middle of the day, as far as I'm concerned, is the perfect excuse for day drinking. And if you've watched our show, you know that we use the excuse for day drinking as often as we possibly can. <laughs> okay, well, thank you all for being here today. So let me give you the rundown really quick on what the ingredients are in these cheesy leftover mashed potato mini waffles. We've got a tablespoon of vegetable oil. I used corn oil because that's what we had in the pantry. Uh, I used an eighth of a cup of heavy cream. You could substitute buttermilk. You could substitute half and half. You could even just use milk if that's what you've got in your refrigerator. There's also one large egg. Uh, there's one and a quarter cups of leftover mashed potatoes. So that would be right here. These are the lovely mashed potatoes that Philip made for us for our Thanksgiving dinner yesterday. And the consistency of these is reasonably stiff, even though they've been sitting out from the refrigerator for almost an hour now. They're still cold and a little stiff. That's going to be fine. There's several ways to adjust the batter if it's too loose or too stiff, and we'll get to that once we start mixing the batter up. So in addition to the potatoes, uh, like I said earlier, I'm using dried chives that are just the chopped kind of dried chives. You could use fresh chives, you could cut up a scallion, you could use part of an onion, whatever you like. Um, there's also a half a cup of shredded cheese. And you can use almost any kind of easily melted cheese that you want. Cheddar, Colby, Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack would add a nice little kick in there if you wanna bump up the flavor profile a little bit, that would be good. And then there's also one quarter of a cup of all-purpose flour. There's a quarter teaspoon of baking powder and an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda. So it's really straightforward. And I'll show you exactly how to make this happen. Like I said, you could also add some bacon bits or some ham bits. You could add some sausage bits. You could add a few other goodies if you want to bump up the flavor profile from the spice perspective. So let's show you 
how to make these lovely mini waffles happen. Okay, so our waffle iron is heating up over here. It's already plugged in and heating up. And with this little waffle iron, you'll know that it's hot because this little blue light right here on the top, it'll go off when the waffle iron is up to temperature. And this heats up to about 350 degrees. So notice that I have my hot pad gloves here because this baby gets really hot on the exterior, so you want to be careful when you're using this so you don't become get injured. So just know that the outside of this gets hot. You can touch this part right here without having a hot pad, but if you're going to touch any of the rest of it, you need to have a glove or a hot pad. Welcome to the show. Hey, baby. Everyone, my partner Philip has joined us in the dining room. Hello, everyone. I'm going to scoot over a little bit so you've got room, because one of the things I notice when I watch the playbacks on these is I seem to hog the whole freaking table while I'm sitting here. So my apologies for doing that. So what do you think about these? Smell them. Mm, they smell good. They smell good. Did you want to try one? Go ahead yeah. and go for it. He hasn't tried any of these yet, because I was making these, like I said, while we were watching the Maddie and Kiki show. Go for it. See what you think. Mmm. Cheesy, potato-y. I like the onions. Mm. And how about the texture? You're going to need a napkin. They're, they're still crispy a little bit. Which is these have been sitting here for a while, yeah. and they stayed crispy. So that's a good thing, because I always like things that you can make. And because you can only make one at a time in this small mini waffle iron, it takes a little while to make a stack of, like this was originally a stack of six. So th these could also be easily warmed up in the June countertop oven. And we put the oven in place today just in case we needed to do that. So let me check in. I want to make sure I said hi to everyone. I think I did. So let's get started. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. It's actually okay. quite let's easy go. to do. So we're going to push these off to the side and I'm going to bring in a big mixing bowl. Oh, didn't don't let me take that away from you. Here, I'll put this over here in case you want a snack while I'm cooking. So uh, what we're going to do first, I have an egg that I already cracked into a bowl and I've already measured out the vegetable oil, which like I said, in this case, I used corn oil just because that's what I had. You could use probably any oil that you want. I don't think it's really going to make any difference. And then I also have the heavy cream. I put a lid on it so it wouldn't get, sometimes heavy cream gets a skin if you leave it sitting out too long. And I always, I don't know how you guys do your live streams, those of you, of you that have channels that you do live streams. Uh, I always like to prepare the ingredients ahead of time as much as possible so I can just sit down and show you how to make everything happen. And uh, <laughs> yes, Karen, <laughs> yeah, Philip has a head start on the booze department over oh, here. We're already working a he Corona. He talks a long time or he gets to make any cocktails. So oh my gosh, I know. We have to wait till we're halfway through the show till we get a drink around here. So you just booze it up all you like. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're just going to put the egg into the large mixing bowl. I wanna to try to get as much of this egg out of here as I can. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's it, really super easy. Now we're going to add the oil. And finally, the heavy cream. Okay, so the next step is we're going to whisk this up and it comes together really fast. I mean, we just wanna make sure we get all of these three ingredients really nicely blended into each other. That's good. So we're getting there. Gail, do you work with a script when you do your videos? We always have an outline like this and I keep it right by my side so I don't forget anything. And then when we do pre-recorded videos, I always make up a whole script I don't necessarily always recite every line the way I write it on the script because I don't want to come off too stiff and rehearsed. But I always, I always, well, not always, I think 95% of the time we work with the script when we do a video because, you know, senior moments happen sometimes in this house and I don't want to forget anything. Yeah. So sometimes it's hard to remember what to say when you're. This tastes really good. Uh, 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 <laughs> I like to have it already all figured out. <laughs> okay, so there. I, all I did was whisk all of that together and got it all nice and combined. really well combined. Exactly. Okay, so then the next thing that we're going to do. This is become a sour cream. Yeah. Well, I actually have some sour cream here. Right. If you would like to just watch out because this yeah. is very hot. Okay, so there's your sour cream, boo. 
Okay, so the next thing that we're going to get to is the mashed potatoes, the chives, pardon me for reaching in front of you, and the grated cheese. So we're gonna switch utensils at this point. And I'm going to add the grated cheese. Well, we're gonna have to get in there like that with our fingers. There we go. Okay, and now I'm gonna add the dried chives. Just pour it all right on in. And next we're going to add the mashed potatoes. There we go. Okay. Okay, so now what we need to do is incorporate all of these ingredients together. And I'm gonna use a wooden spoon for that purpose so I can kind of smash the mashed potatoes and work everything else into the mix. You wanna make sure that everything is really, really thoroughly incorporated so that your waffles will have a nice even texture all the way through. <laughs> I know what you mean about getting tongue-tied, Gail. <laughs> Ask this guy over here. I have to repeat my lines 10 times sometimes. And we actually did a blooper video uh, a couple of months ago what you can see how many times I mess up my lines before I get it right. I mess up my lines all the time. I'm always uh, getting nice compliments on my speaking voice, but the truth is that uh, I still mess up my lines all the time, even if I sound good. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna keep stirring until we get all of this really, really, really well incorporated. The, there we go, how does that look? Does that look incorporated? That looks good. Okay. All right, now we're gonna push this off to the side just for a moment and we're gonna grab another bowl. And in this bowl, we're going to place the all-purpose flour. And I've already pre-measured out the baking soda and the baking powder. We're going to add that. And then we just want to whisk this together. So the dry ingredients are already pre-mixed before we add them to the wet batter that we've already started. Okay, that should do. Okay, so now we're just going to add the dry ingredients to the wet mixture. Voila. Okay, and now we're just going to stir it up. Stir it up. Now the original recipe that I read, they said to fold the flour in. So you can fold if you want to. Oh. I think stirring it works just fine and it doesn't ruin the batter. So sometimes there's some cooking directions that are just a little bit too pretentious for their own good. And let's ask people about when, when you guys bake cakes, do you just dump all the flour in at once or do you do that thing where you do the liquid, the flour, the egg, the flour? And, you know? and on the dry. Yeah, and on the dry. It's oh my so gosh. so important, that's really important. Well, you bake cakes all the time and your cakes come out excellent, and you don't do that. Well, I follow the basic recipe I found in the, uh, let's see, uh, Good Housekeeping, I think it is, the old cookbook. The, oh, the like the one from the 50s. Yeah, that, my like, mom had one, and I got one. Um, and it just said to put, you start with the wet ingredients, and then you dump the flour in, and you beat it for a little while, and you're done. There's no this, this back and forth stuff. Um, it came out fine. I was like, whoa, it was so easy to make a cake. I was like, it made it sound really hard, but it's not really that hard to make a cake. I know. We watch lots of baking videos, and sometimes I see people doing things, and it seems like they're struggling more than they need to to get a good result. So, you know, I don't know. We, I like things, personally, that are really easy to put together. And if they look fancy when they're done, that's great. But, oh, I didn't get this flour up here. Well, see, that might have been a reason to use a spatula instead of a spoon. You want a spatula? Um, I've got some right here, actually, okay. but... I think we're good. I think this looks okay. Yeah. Okay, so let me give, hold this up a little closer to the camera. So we've mixed everything together and you can see the texture of this batter is very thick. And that's actually what you want. Now, if you find that um, what's gonna determine the consistency of the batter more than anything is the consistency of the mashed potatoes yeah. that you start with. So if you make mashed potatoes like Philip does where they tend to be a little bit more on the stiff side, that's gonna be perfect. Yeah, I have like three pounds of potatoes and I added one stick of butter and about a half a cup of cream. Okay, well, there you have it. So if you have mashed potatoes that are creamier and your batter is runnier, 
that's not going to work as well. So the way to solve that problem is add a tablespoon extra of flour and stir that in and keep adding a tablespoon until you get to a consistency that's like this. Okay, it's nice and thick. Plop, there we go. Okay, this is exactly what we're looking for. Now, of course, you could add some bacon bits to this or some ham bits. You could add different spices or seasonings to change up the flavor profile. I'm also not adding any more uh, salt or pepper or anything like that because I want the flavor of your original mashed potatoes to come through as much as possible. Well, but I add salt and pepper to the potatoes too. So. Yeah, so that's not really necessary to add a whole lot more seasonings unless you really want to change up the flavor profile or you want to bump everything up a notch. So I see Jean-Marie Matthews is here. Did I say that right or is it Jean-Marie? I hope I said your name right. If I didn't, please let me know how to say it so we can get it right next time. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you here. Yes, I agree, Gail. Smarter, not harder. <laughs> we like easy, fast. I mean, we do lots of things that actually are quite complicated and do take all day. Well, chopping vegetables sometimes takes, you know. That's what we need a scullery made for. We need some, you know. But, you know, the, results, the end result is great food, so it's worth the effort. Okay, well, welcome to the sh show. We are so happy to have you here. And she said either is fine, so we'll just go with that. Um, let's see. Did I say hi to everyone? Okay, I think I said hi to everyone. So I just want to make sure I'm doing my best to follow along with the chat. If you do live streams, you know that, that sometimes the chat goes by really fast and, and you'll sometimes miss people. I go back through the show later and scroll to make sure uh, if I did miss someone that I try to send people emails to say hi and let them know how much we appreciated that they came in for a visit. So thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Okay, so I think our batter is ready. Ready, Teddy. Okay, and so I, I want to move these back. things yeah. aside for right now. We'll, we'll get back to these soon enough. Okay, so now the next thing that we're going to do is, do you want to trade chairs for a minute? No, I'm fine. Just okay, forward. okay. I just don't want to shove, you're going to be shoved right out the screen. Oh, so. here, I'm fine. Okay, I'm going to move this over here just a teensy bit closer. This won't go very far. It's okay. It's fine. That'll work. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is put some of this batter into the mini waffle iron. But the first thing that I want to do is I want to give this, there, we can see there went some steam, so we're good and hot. I want to give this just a little spritz of cooking spray. Today I'm using olive oil cooking spray. You can use any kind of cooking spray as long as it doesn't have any flour in it, because that won't help very much. With uh, Flour cooking spray works great for fancy bunt pans, but for the waffle iron, not so much. And I'm not a big fan of spraying cooking spray around digital equipment, but there's no choice. So I'm just going to try to keep it from going everywhere. There, just a little dab will do you. It doesn't take a lot. And then I'm going to take an ice cream scoop and I'm going to be helped out with a little tiny spatula. And I'm just going to take a scoop of this. I like to try to measure and get things even so the waffles come out the same size every time. And so we don't have batter spilling out the sides of the waffle iron. So I'm going to put one scoop in here at first. Ooh, we can start to hear a sizzle already. And then I'm going to get another scoop. And I like to level off the top of the scoop. And then I'm going to add this as well. Two scoops. Okay. Two scoops. That should do it. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is very carefully press the top down. And we want to press it all the way down until the waffler is closed. Now, I'm going to use our cool little Smartro digital thermometer. This is a cool little product. You may have seen us do a review video on this before. It works really well. And there we go. I'm starting the timer. The timer is set for five minutes. So we're going to let that go. This is going to cook in here for five minutes. And as soon as five minutes has passed, we'll be ready to pop this baby right out. And then we can start another one. So in the meantime, let me check in with the chat. Uh, <clears throat> Lives are hard to follow. Oh, well, sometimes they are. <laughs> we actually have a really good time uh, doing these lives. We've done more than two dozen of them now in the past year. So we've got a little bit of live experience. I just find that I like to uh, have the logistics of everything figured out way ahead of time. And I always try to set everything up very similarly as far as where things are. So I always have the laptop and stuff off over here to one side. And I put the heating things to that side and we try to decorate the back bar, but you know, it's a lot. And when you're 
working and uh, mixing stuff up and trying to talk at the same time, it can be hard to pay attention to the chat. So it's rising. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay if it rises up a little yeah, bit. Okay. That's what's going to happen. Making it fluffy. And we can hear we can hear some sizzling. I'm not sure if the microphone is going to mm. pick up that sizzling, but we can definitely hear some sizzling going on here. So we know the cooking process is happening. Let me do a little bussing. Oh, thank you for doing some bussing. There we go. Okay. My lovely assistant is taking away the dirty dishes. How cool is that? I think everyone needs a kitchen assistant full time that doesn't make a mess and doesn't cost a lot of money. So we're going to let this baby keep cooking. Let's see. We've got, we've got three more minutes left to go. This little waffler works really good. We've been using it for chaffles. I made some, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Cauliflower rice waffles. And that was actually really, really good as well. We, we use cauliflower rice all the time. I like this tablecloth because it's vinyl. It's the only vinyl tablecloth that we have, but uh, we have a tendency around here to spill things and occasionally knock things over. And everyone in our house tends to drip here and there all over the place, especially on the floor. So the tabletop, I always use a vinyl tablecloth, almost always when we're doing a cooking video. But the rest of the time when we set the table, I always use cloth. If you missed it, our Instagram feed has pictures of our Thanksgiving dinner from last night, uh, including pictures of how we set the table and some of the different food items that Philip made for our dinner. So we've got two minutes left to go. So what did everyone have for Thanksgiving dinner? We had ham. It was really good from Honey Baked. And that we're not big fans of turkey here. Uh, nobody in our house really likes turkey. So we don't bother with all of that stuff. We just got a ham. It was already ready already. So all we had to do was make a bunch of side dishes and appetizers to go with it. And of course, some cocktails. <clears throat> and we'll be getting to cocktails soon enough. Oh, the purple oven mitts. Well, these came from Amazon. Most of the things you see in our videos are things that are widely available uh, from online retailers because I love to shop online. And right now, here in San Francisco, we're still on lockdown. We've been on lockdown for nine months. We can't go to the mall. Uh, and so shopping other than at the grocery store is very challenging at this time. So I'm just glad that I'm already accustomed to shopping online because I love getting things delivered right to the front door. That's my favorite way of doing stuff. Oh, suburban barbecue smoked a turkey. Ah, Ooh. that now, you know what, if you had a smoked turkey sitting in front of us, we would definitely give that a try. Ooh. Oh, Karen's husband's Japanese. So they had crab sushi. Oh, that sounds awesome. That sounds so good. I love alternative menus for holiday dinners. I think that's a super cool thing to do. Thanks for sharing that with us, Karen. That sounds amazing. Okay, and he's doing a ham. Oh, Suburban's doing a ham for Christmas. Are we gonna have another ham for Christmas too? Or are we gonna- No, I'm gonna make meatloaf. Oh, we're gonna have meatloaf for Christmas. Meatloaf is actually my very favorite dinner in the whole world. So meatloaf, mashed potatoes and gravy. Yeah, I'm a meat and potatoes guy. So that sounds excellent to me. I'm making a ring roll so it looks like a wreath. Yeah, it comes out really cool. It's it's in a bunt, uh, large bunt pan mold, and so it looks like a big wreath of meatloaf, and uh, you know it's very festive. I think it looks great, and it also tastes awesome. Fill the middle of mashed potatoes. Ooh, sounds good. Oh yeah, Gail's telling us about her Thanksgiving dinner too. She had turkey dressing, green bean casserole, and banana pudding. <gasps> no. Hello, that sounds amazing. Did she use Nilla wafers? Let's find out. Okay, this is gonna tick, uh, beep. Okay, there we go, timer's going off. So we'll take, shut that baby down and let's open this up and see how we did. Ooh, that looks good. Smells good. It smells good too. It's oh, got nice and crispy. Okay, so I'm gonna carefully lift this out. Whoa, that baby is hot. Okay, and there you have it. So let me hold this up so everyone can see. So there you have it. Now you can make these, um, I gauged the amount of batter to put in the waffler because I wanted the waffles to come out 
as a whole circle this time. If you saw the thumbnail for this live today, you saw pictures of some other ones where I didn't fill the waffler up completely full. And so that gave a really rustic edge. So you can create perfectly round waffles with this batter, or you can make more rustic shaped waffles. If you wanna use these as just an appetizer, you can also pile toppings on top of them and they're super delicious. We're putting sour cream on ours today but you want to let this sit for a little while before you start eating it because these are very, very hot when they come out of the waffle iron. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the cheesy leftover mashed potato mini waffle. Woo, woo, woo. Mmm, these smell so good. Oh, thank you so much, Janine, for your kind words. We really appreciate that. She's complimenting how much fun our show is. We try to project as much positivity and fun as we can. And I think especially right now with everything that's going on on the planet, we just need to, you know, like lighten up and have some fun. So that's what we're doing. So there you have it. Our lovely, <clears throat> pardon me, cheesy leftover mashed potato mini waffle. And we're gonna make some more before the show ends. Now let's see, have we ever done gravy dip for them? Well, actually we have some gravy in the refrigerator. You made excellent gravy yesterday, by the way. So yes, I say dipping these in gravy would be excellent. Or you could just drizzle the gravy over the top. I think if I was serving these as for more of an appetizer with guests, I'd cut these into quarters and then serve quarters. I don't know, how do you feel about that? You wanna serve a whole one? Well, yeah, they're small. They're small. They're just, you know. Come on. They're small. There's just a few bites. There's just a few bites. That's right. Just a few bites. <laughs> oh, yeah, that sounds good. Jean-Marie says, uh, put fried eggs on top. Oh, yeah. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. What's going on up there? I'm going to make warm up some gravy. Oh, okay. Philip's going to go in the kitchen and warm up some oh, gravy. Right, yeah. So, right. hey, Suburban, we're going to try your gravy idea right now. Thank you, Sunset. We really appreciate you being here. You always have such nice, kind messages for us. We really appreciate that. Okay. Uh, oh, my gosh. A fortune on king crab legs. Yeah, you know, in San Francisco, we don't eat crab, but in San Francisco, crab it's is hugely, popular. hugely popular. And this year, um, I'm not sure what the reason was, but the crab season was put on hold uh, till well after Thanksgiving. So there was no crab available at any of the fishermen's wharf stores where people usually flock to at this time of the year to get their Thanksgiving crabs. There seems to be uh, something going on in the ocean. We're not sure what, but it wasn't appropriate for uh, fishing for crabs this year, at least not yet anyway. Yes, that's a really good idea, Jean-Marie. Uh, we have not tried using stuffing in the waffler yet, but that is on our to-do list. And now that you've suggested it, I want to try it as soon as possible. Um, I'm also thinking we could, we had some lovely sweet potatoes from yesterday that were super delicious. I was thinking we could probably repurpose those in a similar way to this, but we haven't tried that yet. So if you try it, let us know because we'd love to see it. This batter does not have to be cooked in a mini waffler like this. You can use a regular size waffle iron. Just be sure that you coat it with cooking spray really, really well because a lot of big waffle irons don't have a super high quality nonstick finish like the dash does. And so what'll happen is things just stick and then you have an epic fail. So fortunately that didn't happen today. Uh, we managed to get these out pretty effortlessly from the waffle iron. Um, yeah. Oh, herbed butter or pesto. Well, all of those things sound good. <laughs> In fact, someone was commenting earlier about making a compound butter that they slathered all over their turkey yesterday for Thanksgiving. When I, we were watching the Maddie and Kiki show earlier, and that came up in the chat about what people were doing for their turkey, and someone said they were using compound butter. Yes, these, <clears throat> Karen, these little waffle irons are about $20. Ours is an aqua color. They come in lots of different colors. There's red, there's pink, there's black. There's even a cool chrome looking one. I think it was a little more expensive, like about $25. But we bought this one on sale on Amazon for only $14.99. And it works really good. My only complaint about it, if I had to have a complaint, was that it's a little bit of a pain to clean because the plates inside here are not removable and you can't get this unit wet. So what I do is I use Q-tips 
and clean out the crevices with Q-tips and a paper towel once this is cooled down. And that's, it's actually not that difficult to do. You know, I'm whining because it's a pain, but it's actually pretty easy. Okay, so gravy. we've got some gravy, suburban, we've got gravy. It's really thick, I like the gravy. Yes, we like the gravy. So just slather a little of that on and let's try it out. Here, this was the fork I was using earlier, so I'll let you have a clean fork. That looks good. Okay, so we're gonna try this. Oh, Janine has company coming. Well, we hope you have a lovely afternoon and thank you so much for coming to hang out with us today. We really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to see you. Happy belated Thanksgiving. And I hope you come back and see us again soon. So have a great dinner with your friends, Janine. Thanks so much for joining us today. So go for it. I'm gonna get in here and get me a piece of this too. I wanna try this with the gravy. I'm, this is gonna be great. Oh my God. Oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> that was a great idea, Suburban. This is awesome. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. The gravy on these mm. is to die for. This is supremely delicious. Oh my gosh. We are going to be pigging out on this all afternoon. I originally made these. I was thinking we'd have them for appetizers later, but we might mm. just wind up eating them all for lunch. Mmm. Mm. Oh yeah. The, the gravy, of course, with the mashed potatoes is, you know, a no brainer as far as when, you know, it's Thanksgiving dinner. But this, what I really like about this is there's this lovely crunch element from the crust that develops yeah. on the outside of the mini waffles. It tastes it's so, so good. That was a great idea. <laughs> well, I wish we could beam these out to you guys so you could taste them, mm -hmm. or even better, we could beam you here so you could just sit around the table with us and we could all chow down on some of these because these are really, really yummy. These are so, so good. Okay, I'm gonna take one more bite. And then I'm going to mix us a cocktail because we're halfway through the show. Um, well, I haven't had any booze yet. So let's move a few things out the way. Mm. I like it that we can push things off to the front of the table and then they don't show on camera anymore. <laughs> so if you're doing live streams, just know that here. Use a really wide table so you can push things to the front of it. And then, you know, the viewers can only see to here. So everything further in front is out of the way okay so let's make a drink because i am thirsty so let's just be careful we mm -hmm. watch out for that because it's very hot so what we're going to do for a drink today this is this drink is very boozy because there is no juice there's no mixers it's all booze mm. and it's sweet and yummy so what are we making we are making a chocolate raspberry vodka teeny oh so of course we're going to have some vodka let me reach back that's not the vodka i'll tell you about that in a minute uh we've got vodka and you can use whatever kind of vodka you want this is just a mid-priced vodka that's from the grocery store it doesn't have to be fancy it doesn't have to be stolichnaya or really expensive vodka and we also have Creme de cacao. This is white creme de cacao, which is a chocolate flavored liqueur. You could also use, if if you have it, you could use dark creme de cacao. These products taste the same. What's going to happen is because this is a dark brown color, when you mix it with the raspberry liqueur, you're going to get a, get a really deep burgundy color. And if we mix this with the white creme de cacao, we're going to get more of like a magenta pinky sort of vibe going on. So the flavor won't be any different. It'll just change what color your finished drink is. So if you don't have white creme de cacao, dark creme de cacao will work just fine. And when it comes to the raspberry liqueur, we actually have a giant bottle of it back here. This raspberry liqueur, Philip makes this. So we've done a video on this before. It it's takes, easy. it's very easy. So check out, it was about two years ago we did it. Uh, and it's super, super easy to do. It's the base is vodka. And sometimes we use fresh raspberries and sometimes we use frozen. Frozen absolutely but, I think make it better. Uh, make, you get a deeper, richer color. But the flavor is pretty much the same. Yeah, the flavor is pretty much the same. But we notice the frozen raspberries often aren't whole anymore. They're broken up and sometimes in bits. And for some reason, that seems to release more of its natural color into the vodka base. It takes about two months to steep a batch of this. And it doesn't involve any cooking. We just put the raspberries, some sugar, and some vodka in a great big mason jar and screw the lid on tight, shake it up really good, and pop it in the back of the pantry where it's cool and dark at the bottom of the pantry cabinet. And two months later, voila, raspberry liqueur. 
Now, of course, you can buy raspberry liqueur at the grocery store. If you're going to do that or if you're going to do buy raspberry <laughs> liqueur from the liquor store, be sure you get a raspberry liqueur that says that it has natural flavoring. Because artificially flavored liqueurs usually taste really artificial and it doesn't make for a really yummy cocktail experience. So our three ingredients today are going to be the raspberry liqueur, the creme de cacao, which is white chocolate liqueur, and vodka. So <clears throat> I'm going to use the same trusty little cobbler style shaker that I often use. Hey, Arcade Arcade is here. Great to see you. Thanks for coming to join us today. We really appreciate it. Okay, so I was babbling about the cocktail shaker. Um, for those of you who don't haven't watched our other videos, this is a three-part cobbler style shaker. And what we like about this is the strainer is already built in, so you don't need to have a Hawthorne strainer or any other tools to pour your cocktail. And we're going to use this little jigger to measure. Usually on our pre-recorded videos, we always use our cute little logo shot glasses. These are two ounce shot glasses, so sometimes it's a little hard to get a half a shot perfectly an ounce. So that's why today I'm gonna use the jigger. It's one ounce on the top and a half an ounce on the other side. So that's gonna be our measuring method today. And then we're gonna serve these in stemmed martini style cocktail glasses. This drink is shaken over ice, but then it's poured into the martini glass without any ice, and that's called serving the drink up. UP, serving the drink up, means there's no ice in the drink. So let's get busy, because I'm thirsty. So what we're gonna do first is put some ice cubes in the cocktail shaker. I like to fill the cocktail shaker about halfway full with ice cubes. So I think we need a couple more. This cocktail shaker <clears throat> holds 18 ounces. <clears throat> that you can use a bigger cocktail shaker and you can double this mix to make more than one at the same time. For me, this mix would be one cocktail, it, but I tend to drink big cocktails. <laughs> so you can split it into two smaller cocktails. That's perfectly fine. So let's see, let's get the vodka. Okay, vodka, we're gonna do three ounces of vodka. One, I love the speed pour tips that you put in the bottles because it really helps keep from spilling because oops, well, unless you're like me and you pour things right out the side of the container, it does make things faster and a little neater, especially if you're careful. So let's put that back there. Now we've got three ounces of vodka. We're gonna put in two ounces of the raspberry liqueur and one ounce of the chocolate liqueur. So let's go for the raspberry. I just love the color of this. It's so beautiful. It's like the deepest raspberry color that you've ever seen. Okay, so raspberry liqueur, two ounces of that, and we're gonna do one ounce of the creme de cacao. Voila. Okay, that's it. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is make sure that we get the top and the cap on the shaker very securely. And like I'm always saying, I like to use both hands to hold a cocktail shaker and we're gonna give this a really vigorous <laughs> shake. I like to smile when I shake because, you know, cocktails are supposed to be fun. There we go. Okay, that didn't take very long. They don't call happy hour for nothing. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And you see the shaker gets cold and frosty on the exterior. That's exactly what we're looking for. And now it's time, time to, pour. to pour. So let's get a couple of cocktail glasses over here. I'm ready for a little afternoon tipple. So let's go. Ooh, pretty color. This looks so good. Now, if we had used the dark creme de cacao, it wouldn't be this sort of deep magenta pink. It would be more of a deep burgundy color which is also quite lovely. Yeah. So you can use whatever kind of chocolate liqueur you can find. It doesn't matter if it's white or if it's brown. So there you have it. The chocolate raspberry vodka teeny. Now, of course, if you have raspberries available to you, fresh raspberries available to you, you could skewer them on a cocktail pick and garnish this. We usually use maraschino cherries just because that's easy to keep in the refrigerator in a jar and then they're constantly fresh all the time. Today, I'm not garnishing at all. Uh, 
just because I actually forgot the maraschino cherries in the refrigerator. <laughs> so, so that's the real truth. So there's one for you right. and one for me. So we're ready to try the chocolate raspberry vodka teeny. I just love the color. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for being with us today. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, chocolate and raspberry. Mmm. Yummy. Ooh. This is so good. This reminds me of one of those seeds chocolates. Yes, it reminds me of the of we love seeds candy, and my favorite one is the raspberry truffle. And it's got this lovely raspberry cream with a dark chocolate shell around the outside. And that's what this mm -hmm. tastes like. This tastes like candy. <laughs> but it's also 100% booze. So be careful when you're drinking these because these are very boozy and it could sneak up on you because it's like drinking liquid candy. These yeah. are super, super yummy. <laughs> super good. Cheers, honey bunny. Cheers, sweetie. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us. Oh, my gosh. These are so yummy. Nothing but alcohol. You're so right. <laughs> but you don't know. Karen, you will love this raspberry liqueur. You can just drink it by itself as an aperitif in a shooter style glass. It's very yummy all by itself. And it mixes well with lots of other things. We've been using it for a uh, great. Philip likes to drink greyhounds. So we mix gin, grapefruit juice, and a little bit of this raspberry liqueur. I like to make margaritas. So I make my margarita and I replace the triple sec with the raspberry liqueur super yummy. and it's super, super yummy. Tequila and raspberry liqueur go really, really well together. So those are some other choices you might try this. Once you taste this stuff, you will always constantly have a batch going. Cause ever since we first did this about two or three years ago, we've always got a batch in the pantry and a fresh bottle ready to drink yeah. some because we use this all the time. It's super yummy and it's really easy to make. You just have to be patient because it takes two months for it to steep. You get throughput. Yeah, you have to start out. The production and, you know, we, we have, we, as, as every time we decant a new bottle of it, we start yeah. another one so we don't ever run out of raspberry liqueur. So, hey, Cast Iron Skillet Kitchen, great to see you. We hope you had a happy Thanksgiving too. Thanks for hanging out with us this afternoon. What we're up to is we've been making cheesy leftover mashed potato mini waffles in our mini dash waffle iron. And we just finished mixing up a chocolate raspberry vodka teeny. Super easy to do. And the ingredient list for the waffles as well as the cocktails are below in the description right below this video. So you can copy and paste those ingredient lists into your recipe book and give these a try. If you do give these a try, be sure and let us know. We'd love to hear all about it. Uh, we've had several of our friends make different things that we've done on our live streams as well as our pre-recorded videos. And if you take a picture of it, put it on your Instagram account and tag us in your post. That way we can come and check out what you've been up to. We love to see what our friends and viewers are making at home, especially if you've started with one of our recipes. So thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Behind the Garage Barbecue is here. Hey, great to see you too. Happy belated Thanksgiving. We hope everything is going well with you at your house. Uh, the, he has a great show. His outdoor kitchen setup is amazing and he makes really delicious food. So if you haven't already checked out the Behind the Garage Barbecue channel, I'm going to suggest that you do that sometime soon. So thank you for, happy, uh, for uh, coming and hanging out with us today. So I want to set my cocktail aside after I have another sip. And we're going to make one more waffle before yeah. we run out of time. So, because we already ate the one we made earlier. So let's make another one. Mmm. Oh my gosh, these drinks are so delicious. Okay, so we already have our batter ready already. I'm going to fold this out of the way. We already have our batter ready already. And what I want to do now is... Add a little bit of it to the waffle iron. So can I'm. You spray it again? Uh, no, we don't. You, once you spray it the first time, you can usually make a whole batch without respraying okay. it. This uh, batter is enough to make six full size waffles like this. If you want to make these more <laughs> rustic, you don't have to fill this up completely full, and then you can get sort of a scalloped or rugged edge. That's how we did it for the ones that you saw in the thumbnail for this live stream. That was less batter than what I'm using now, so the edge comes out sort of deckled. It's uh, just sort of rugged. So if you want a little more rustic feel or if you want to use these as more of an hors d'oeuvre, that's the way to go. So we're going to take this and I'm, I like to use one nice level scoop and get that in here. 
Okay, and then I'm going to get one more scoop. This is a little bit of a messy process, but it works. So we're going to get that in there like that. Ready? Be careful now. It's hot. You can touch the tip. There we go. And we're going to, Philip's going to press the lid all the way oh, down. All the way down. Okay, so now we need to set our timer for five minutes. So in five minutes, this puppy will be ready to pop out. So let's put that aside. We're gonna pop it out onto this plate once again. So this is the goal that we're going for right here, ladies and gentlemen. These are the finished waffles. These I actually made earlier before we started broadcasting because I wanted to make sure that we had everything worked out. I always like to try to make sure I have practiced whatever we do for a live stream so it doesn't turn into an epic fail video oh, no. so hey cooking with jen and drinking with gina is here great to see you it's so awesome to have you here this afternoon we hope you had a great thanksgiving thank you for joining us today and let's see let me make sure that I, I hope i said hi to everyone it's so fun to have the feedback going on at the same time that the video is unfolding it's uh, to get the instant feedback is really a super fun thing. So if you're doing, if your channel is not doing live streams yet, think it over because not only is it fun to have all this lovely interaction, but our experience has been that our watch hours go up significantly every time we do a live stream, much more so than on our pre recorded videos. I'm not sure what that says about our pre-recorded videos, but I, I know that a lot of people really enjoy the whole live stream format and the fact that you can chat with other people that you already know in the chat room. If well, our videos lasted an hour, an hour and a half, then it might be different. Yeah. The videos only last five minutes or yeah. less. Sometimes. Most of our pre-recorded so, videos are, are three, four, five minutes long. I think the longest one we ever did was about 15 minutes yeah. long. Uh, but most of them are in the, you know, four to six minute range. So it goes by quickly and it takes a while to build up watch hours when you have short videos like that. But when we do live streams for an hour or an hour and a half or two hours, a couple of times we've gone way over an hour. Uh, so that you'll see that your watch time will go way, way up because people love to hang out. Hey, the cooking cop and babe is here. Josh and babe, um, mwah, mwah, mwah. we love you guys. We hope everything's going well with you. We think about you every single day and we hope you were having a lovely Thanksgiving yesterday. We had such a great time on Wednesday. We uh, have taped already, we taped a video for the cooking cop and babe channel. Uh, that they ran a couple weeks ago where we made a cocktail and we were in, oh, they were so kind and they invited us to come back for a second go. So we taped a new cocktail video on Wednesday, which we're gonna start editing today, as soon as we're done with this live stream actually. And we'll have another cocktail video coming up on the Cooking Cop and Babe channel. We're doing a whole thing with lots of different YouTube channels that have come together because Josh and Babe aren't able to produce any content right now. So what we're doing is several of us are producing videos for their channel and it's called hashtag the cooking cop and babe channel takeover. So be sure and check out the cooking cop and babe channel because while you won't get to see our lovely friends, Josh and babe right now, you will get to see lots of other cool popular YouTubers who are filling in while they have to be away. So thank you again for asking us. We really, really are thrilled and honored to be able to participate and help out with the hashtag cooking cop and babe channel takeover. It's so, so cool. And just so you know, uh, tomorrow on the Mr. Homeowner channel, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern time and running all day and all evening until 10 p.m. Eastern time, there is a 12 hour fundraising marathon for Josh. So be sure and check out the Mr. Homeowner channel. You'll probably see promotions for this on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all over the place. It's going to be a 12 hour marathon live stream. There are 12 different channels that are gonna come on one every hour that are gonna show us how to make some awesome, amazing, yummy food. And I can't wait to watch. It's gonna be so super cool. And we're going to be able to raise some money to help out Josh and Babe while they're going through a really serious personal crisis right now. So much love to you, Josh and Babe. We adore both of you and we are so fortunate to have lovely friends like you in our lives. Yes, oh yeah, I know. I, uh, Rob from Mr. Homeowner Channel and I've been working together behind the scenes because we did some graphics for him to use to promote the fundraiser event. And he's just done a really excellent job of 
pulling together a really amazing roster of some really cool YouTubers who make amazing food. So it, tomorrow, be sure and tune in to the Mr. Homeowner Channel and check that out because it's going to last all day for 12 hours. It starts at 10 a.m. on the East Coast. That's 7 a.m. out here in San Francisco where we are. So we're going to be up early so we can start watching. And it's almost time for this next waffle to come out. Mm -hmm. So let's wait, wait for the timer to beat. There okay. we go. There's our smart tro timer. Okay, that's good. Now we're good. Okay, so that was five minutes in the waffler. And let's just have a look. Ooh, I think that looks like it came out perfectly. These get nice and crunchy. And a lot of the crispiness comes from the cheese. This is super good. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Okay, let's keep this baby closed. There we go. Okay, so let me hold this up so you can see a fresh one. This is the cheesy leftover mashed potato mini waffle. Da, da, da. So we tried this plain. They taste amazing. We've tried this with sour cream. I think we've had suggestions of compound butter. Suburban Barbecue suggested gravy, and yeah, we have yeah. gravy, so. It was dynamite! It was super delicious. Now, when these come out of the Dash Mini Waffler, this thing heats up to 350 degrees. So these puppies are really hot when they come out, so I like to let them sit for just a little while before we start biting into them because the, the center particularly always seems to stay really super hot. But we'll get to this soon enough. Let's have another sip of this drink. Okay, and we also made today a chocolate raspberry vodka teeny. And the ingredients for the waffles and for the cocktail are in the description that's right below where you're watching this live stream. So you can copy and paste those ingredient lists into your recipe book and be sure and let us know if you give these uh, drinks or this waffle recipe a try. Okay, I think I said hi to everyone in the chat room. Well, thank you, Josh and Babe. I uh, They say we must make the best cocktails on YouTube. <laughs> well, I would tend to agree. <laughs> We're very adventurous in the cocktail department. Mm. Mm. This is so good. And it was super fun working on uh, cocktail videos for Josh and Babe because I know that Josh is a big bourbon man. And so the last cocktail we did for them was a bourbon forward cocktail. And we used Four Seasons bourbon, or no, excuse me, Four Roses bourbon is what I want to say. That's a small batch type of bourbon whiskey. And it's really, really delicious. And I am I like to drink bourbon, but it's not my first choice of spirit. But after we had that drink, it was so it was good. Delicious. It was so, so good. We've been making them a lot. And we have new drinks coming up in the next video that we're doing for the Cooking Cop and Babe channel. And we're not gonna tell you what those drinks are right now. It's gonna be a surprise. You're gonna have to go to their channel and find out. You'll probably see that video coming up in the next couple of weeks because it's holiday themed. So it'll be not in the not too distant future that you see that. And we'll be sure and be tweeting and Instagramming and Facebooking about when that's gonna happen. So you can be sure and check that out. Okay, so right now, Philip is dolloping on we're slathering on slathering some on of the gravy. gravy. This is the gravy that's left over from our Thanksgiving dinner last night, as well as were the mashed potatoes that we used for the mini waffles. So there it's slathered with gravy. Let's give this a taste. I can't wait. Okay, I'm making a mess over here. I want to clean up a little bit of this mess. There we go. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay, let's give this baby a try. This is going to turn out to be our lunch. Mm. I want to try this with the gravy. Mm. 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 That is so good. These are so delicious. Mm. Mm. These are really good. Mm. Mm. And this was so supremely easy. Mixing the ingredients together for this batter didn't take very long at all. And as long as you have some mashed potatoes already made, you're in business. And the hardest part is actually making the mashed potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> now, I suppose you could take mashed potatoes, you know, from Kentucky Fried Chicken and sure. do the same thing with it. The key to getting the consistency of the batter right really has to do with the mashed potatoes themselves. The mashed potatoes that we started out with were the ones Philip made yesterday for Thanksgiving dinner, and they were a little on the stiff side, which is how we prefer our mashed potatoes. If you're starting out with mashed potatoes that are creamier or looser, you're going to probably need to add a little bit of extra flour to this, but mix up your batter first and see how it goes. And if it's too runny, then you can add a little extra flour. You want this batter to be to be thick like that, okay? So it doesn't run, it plops. That's what we're looking for as far as the consistency for making these. 
And Floppy. they are super, super yummy. Oh, Dano's Pit Patio is here. Great to see you. Thanks so much for coming. Oh, it's awesome to have you here. We hope you had a good Thanksgiving yesterday. Wiggy certainly did. Philip made some lovely food for us yesterday. We had honey baked ham. Honey baked ham. I didn't make that. Well, <laughs> we got that from the store already ready already. And all we did, uh, we prefer our ham to be warm. So we put it in the oven and just let it very slowly and gently just heat up just a little bit. We didn't want to cook the ham anymore, but we did want to serve it warm rather than at room temperature. And we had mashed potatoes with gravy that we're using here for this recipe. Philip also made these really killer green beans. Oh. And tell us how you did that. Oh, well, just I prep the green beans, you know, cut them in little pieces, um, steam them a little bit. Then I saute them in bacon fat, and then I made a and I added some garlic, and then I made a sauce with soy sauce, uh, um, a little vinegar, and orange juice. No, Did no, you no, have balsamic? Was, no, no, it was, it was um, soy sauce, balsamic vinegar, and molasses. That was, that was it. That yeah. was it. There was molasses. And a little bit of cornstarch. Yeah, that's it. And then um, saute the green beans, add the garlic, slice it a little bit, and then just pour the sauce on, and just push it to a little bit stick, and then voila. And then he took really crispy bacon All right, right. and pulverized it with a chef knife. I mean, it wasn't bits. It was like almost bacon dust. Even a little bit. And sprinkled that all over the top right before serving. The plate looked awesome. The bowl we served in it looked awesome. And you don't have to take my word for it. It's actually one of the pictures on our Instagram feed because we did a slideshow on our Instagram feed last night that showed that how the table was set and some of the different food that we had. And I featured the green beans both when you were cooking them in the pan and when they were finished in the serving bowl because they were so delicious. They looked really pretty and they tasted amazing. We also had sweet potatoes and our other housemate made some stuffing for us. And that, I think that was almost everything, wasn't it? You made the carrots. Oh, right, we had carrots. The day before, I roasted some carrots along with some apples and some diced onion. And that was super, super yummy. Mm. And I love make ahead things like that. All we had to do was rewarm it right before we were ready to have dinner. So that was super easy. It was, it was. We wished you guys could have been here to join us and share it with us, Josh. We hope everything's going well with you. And oh my gosh, yes, the dinner was lovely. And we hope you had a lovely dinner too. So bacon fat, hello. Yes. <clears throat> bacon fat. Woot, woot. I yeah. learned to say that from my mom. Every time I make bacon, I have a special little container that has a sieve on the top. And you just cook your bacon, pour the grease through it, catches the bits, and you all hear this lovely bacon fat. And it, anyway, we use it a lot. <laughs> we do. We do. It's something that I never did before I knew you. I had no idea you could repurpose bacon fat. I always just threw it in the garbage. So what an idiot. But now we use it all the time for all kinds of things in, in place of any other oil. I, mean, I use it to make the gravy. Yes. It, and it is a the gravy is butter so and good. Fat. So, so good. So, okay. So today we've been making these lovely cocktails. This is a chocolate raspberry vodka teeny, and the ingredients for it are in the description below where you're watching this live stream. It was delicious. It was delicious. <laughs> well, mine still uh, is delicious. I can drink because he's talking and I'm just drinking. So. I know. My, I always have half my drink left I at love the end my of the job. live stream. <laughs> Everyone wants his job, too. I get so many emails about, can I have Philip's job? <laughs> he gets to pop in and taste stuff. I eat good food. I get good drinks. The truth know, is, what, like. what most people don't know is that while we're, we're both reasonably proficient in the kitchen, a lot of the recipes that I show you how to do are recipes that this gentleman has come up with. And Philip cooks every day. He bakes in the kitchen every day. We use our June oven every single day. And... You're always baking something yummy. Cookies, cakes, pies. Oh, we I had love baked goods. We had pumpkin pie last night, too, which yeah. he made fresh. It was so, so yummy and slathered with lots of whipped cream. So while we didn't do a traditional turkey, most of the other things we did were traditional or riffs on traditional side dishes or things that you might expect to see at a Thanksgiving feast. It was supremely fun. Let me see. And we did have a small salad before we started feasting. Just, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. We ate some raw vegetables some in a salad and, you know. with some oil and vinegar dressing. We were really good. No no, no, no excessive fat. We start healthy, and then we just dive in. Well, you know, it's Thanksgiving. We don't, 
We don't eat petit potatoes nearly as much as we used to, even though they're my favorite vegetable, mm. because we're kind of doing a low carb thing and potatoes don't really lend itself to that. So when we do have potatoes, I want the to be like the best potatoes that they can possibly be. And your mashed potatoes were awesome. Turning those mashed potatoes into this batter that created these waffles, it was so easy and these are so good. It's, it's kind of like a potato pancake. You could probably take the batter and put little scoops in and then just pat it down, you know, in a, in a pan of hot oil and pat it down a little bit. Yeah, you I mean, could cook it that way it, too. Then I'm yeah. make that would work. Yeah. And you don't have to use a mini dash waffler to do this either. If you have a large size waffle iron, you're just going to need to put some more batter in it. Or you can put small amounts in each of, usually oh, yeah. wafflers have four segments. Just put a little bit in each segment and then you'll be able to make four at once. So you can do these a lot quicker. They do not have to be perfectly round if you put them in here. You can use less they batter than I did. They taste good just the way. Yeah, they taste good. <laughs> you, the ones on the, the examples on the thumbnail for this live stream, I did not fill the waffler up completely full, so it got sort of a rugged edge on it. So if you want a more rustic look or you want smaller size pieces to serve, that's the way to go. Just use a little less batter because they do not have to be perfectly round to taste good. So uh, let me see. Oh, hey, great to see you. Chef Alexis is here from the other side of the stove. Awesome to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. We hope you had a great day yesterday with you and your partner. They're all the way on the other side of the country. And they, if you have not seen Chef Alexis on the other side of the Stove channel, I'm going to encourage you to tune in sometime very soon, maybe right after this live stream is over. He makes really awesome things. His show, oh my God, his editing is spot on. Okay. And those of you who've watched our pre-recorded videos know that we are into editing. And Chef Alexis is not only is his food gorgeous and his kitchen gorgeous, his editing is gorgeous and it makes the videos really pleasurable and fun to watch. So super job on that where I'm so impressed with his editing. I know how long editing takes. He spends hours and 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 hours editing video. I do. A lot of times, you know, the video comes out and it's only three and a half minutes long, but it took me seven days to do the editing. You know, when you see all those split screens and all the things moving around and stuff, you know, Chef Alexis can tell you this, that takes time to make all that stuff and happen. And dealing with finicky software. Well, you know, yeah, software is almost always finicky. And I've been using the same software for five and a half years to edit videos. So I've learned the kinks in the software that we have. That's why I always dread having to buy new software or to upgrade when something gets discontinued or doesn't work anymore. Because it, there's always a learning curve no matter how much experience you have editing video, if you try to use a different type of software than what you're accustomed to, it's kind of like starting all over again. So you have to get used to the software that you've got. Let's see. Uh, of course. Okay. we're so, Oh, everyone's playing so nicely in the chat room. Thank you all so much for being so lovely in the chat room. It's so nice that we don't have to do a lot of moderating because we just don't have... We're not, we're a magnet for positive people. So it makes it really easy. You know, sometimes I've seen other chats where, you know, some people aren't always so friendly. And um, those are the people that you just, my advice is if someone's not being nice, hit the block button because we do not need that negativity in our life. We want positivity. Cheers to positivity. Hmm. Well, you better finish that baby off because beer doesn't taste good once it gets hot. They drink it in England that way, though, you know? Of course, Jen. I know. That's how uh, Jen's talking about how she's finding lots of nice new channels in the chat room. That's actually how we met lots of people by going to other people's live streams and seeing who is in the chat. It also drew a lot more attention to our channel, which is how we've been able to grow. Since uh, we've been on YouTube for five and a half years, and it was a very slow build. It was only about this time last year that we finally got to a thousand subscribers, and it took a while. The first couple of years, we were sort of flailing, and we had, you know, like less than 50 subscribers. We didn't get too many views. We kept on forging ahead, and then I noticed that the channels that were actually participating in the YouTube community, as far as the social media aspect, like commenting on pre-recorded videos and participating in the live stream chats, those are the channels that I've seen their numbers go up faster than most other channels. So 
participating in the YouTube community, particularly the foodie community, is a really important element to growing your channel. So that's my advice to you. If your channel is still small and you're just getting started, don't give up. Keep pressing ahead, but participate in the social media aspect of the platform as much as you really can. You really nice people. <laughs> you do. We literally know people all over the world now from having uh, this YouTube experience, especially since we started doing live streams and participating in the chat room of other people's live streams. It's brought a lot of people to our channel that didn't already know about us. And that's exactly what she's talking about, where you see different channel names go by in the chat and then you can check out those channels. And it's super, super fun. And everybody's supportive. Everybody I know. Else. That's one of the, a lot of people are like, well, why are you so nice to all these other people and giving them shout outs? They're your competition. It's like, no, no they're not. We are all We're in this all together. We're all raising the water and rising our boats at the same time. Exactly what he said. You know, what we want to lift everyone up. It's so, not a zero sum game. That's right. <laughs> okay. So participating at a higher level and doing what you can, we found lifting other channels up as much as we can and, uh, giving shout outs to people and participating in other people's live streams as well as our own. It really has helped us grow our channel. It's increased our watch time. It's increased our subscribers. It's increased our number of views. We're still not monetized yet. The good news is we don't really have to worry about that right now. I mean, would nice. It would be nice if we could get a paycheck out of it. <laughs> so then we could pay for some of these fancy things. But um, so my advice to those of you who are just getting started is keep right ongoing and participate at the highest level that you can, not only in producing your own content, but in the social media aspect of the YouTube platform, you will find you'll get introduced to lots more people. Lots more people will discover you that way. Super great way. You don't have to buy advertising. You don't have to pay for fake subscribers from a service from halfway around the planet. It can be done legitimately. It just a lot of times it's a really slow build. It just takes a while. Occasionally, you know, we know someone who started out um, not right around the same time we did. And he went from 20 subscribers to 20,000 subscribers. <laughs> like he just exploded. His particular channel has a very well-defined point of view and works a very specific food plan. So that I think has a lot to do with it. I've seen channels that have a really well-defined well point done. of view. Yeah, it is. Uh, channels that have a really well-defined point of view are the ones that I've seen go up the quickest as far as uh, what my observations have been. Oh, Top Gun says he found our channel from Yester Kitchen. Oh. We love Jill from Yester Kitchen. We've been watching her show for two years now. She's a really fabulous personality and she is just super awesome. And of course, the fact that she makes retro dishes that we know what they are from our childhood is supremely cool. <laughs> so I'll be sure and thank Jill for sending Top Gun our way. Thank you so much for letting us know that, Top Gun. So, um... Let's see. Yes. Okay. I think I said hi to everyone. I know what he, uh, Chef Alexis is saying. Like, everyone loves Jill. She's just so fabulous. And I, I was hoping we would see her today. She's often filming on Friday, so that's not always possible. But anyway, if you're out there, Jill, we adore you. And if you haven't checked out her channel, Yester Kitchen is the name of Jill's channel. And she makes recipes from the past. Sometimes it's the 40s. Sometimes it's the 60s. Sometimes it's the 80s. It's always really super fun. She has a full episode every Friday and then what she calls a Yester Quickie on Tuesdays. So for our channel on Tuesdays, we do a live stream every Tuesday at noon. And on Fridays, we usually have a pre-recorded video. And, and the times, the weeks that we don't, we do a live stream on Friday as well. So that's how you know. If you Sometimes people complain that they don't get the announcements of the live streams uh, until it's already over. So... You don't have to wait for an announcement. We're here at noon on Tuesday and occasionally at noon on Friday. And if we're not here at noon on Friday, there'll be a pre-recorded episode posted every Friday. So Tuesdays and Fridays, that's when you can find us here. Occasionally we do a special party like for Halloween. We did a Saturday night live stream for two whole hours. We were plotzed at the end of it because we, we made so many cocktails. And, yummy foodie too. and when we are making cocktails, it's, it's not like uh, on you know, on television where you can't actually drink alcohol on TV. Uh, everything that you oh, see please. is fake, fake. Anyway, <laughs> this is real booze from real booze bottles. We are definitely getting tipsy. Hmm. Okay. So there you have it. That's what we have for you today. We made these lovely 
cheesy leftover yum, mashed yum, potato yum. mini waffles. These are so, so delicious. And we also made a chocolate raspberry vodka teeny cocktail. Which was delicious. Well, mine's mm. almost gone. Mmm. Mmm. These are so yummy. So the ingredients for both of these recipes, the cocktail and the mini waffles, are in the description below the live stream that you're watching right now. So you can scroll down and copy and paste those ingredient lists into your recipe book if you'd like to. And if you try either one of these items, be sure and take a picture and post it on your Instagram account and tag us in your posts so we can find your post and check out what you've been up to. We'd love to see how this worked out for you and how this cocktail worked out for you if you give this baby a try. So for today, we've been making these lovely little mini waffles out of leftover mashed potatoes. This batter was supremely easy to put together. If you missed the part where we mix the batter, it's at the beginning of the show. So like the first 10 or 15 minutes is when the mixing of the batter actually happened. Okay. It's really, really easy. And if you don't have a mini dash waffler, consider adding one to your collection of kitchen gadgets. These are under $20. They come in lots of different colors. I'm not promoting it because we're making any money off of it. I'm promoting it because I actually think this is a really good product. We use it a lot. Yeah, and it's not expensive. So it's, you know, it's one of those cool little gadgets that you get that works really well and didn't cost an arm and a leg. So I really love this little unit. We use this all the time. Oh, okay. Suburban wants to know what went better with the waffles, the vodka teeny or the Corona beer? Uh, well, personally, while well, the Pogatini is delicious, um, I think the beer went better with the savoriness of the waffle. Especially when I did the gravy. Who, who, where was your suggestion? That Suburban yeah, suggested okay. the gravy. Well, that was a great yeah. suggestion. <laughs> and it was, yeah, so. This is a really delicious drink, but I will say I'd probably put this in the dessert cocktail category because of its sweetness yeah. factor. So this is, and because it's 100% booze, it's not really something that you could drink all day unless you want to be completely hammered. Oh, well, you could. <laughs> you could, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think, yeah, I think um, uh, this, I mean, they definitely, it, I, it didn't keep me from drinking it, <laughs> the fact that it's sweet. Um, but yes, uh, something that's a little less sweet for this appetizer would probably be good. This is really a dessert cocktail. So I probably could have paired a cocktail that was more congruent with this appetizer item. But we had the raspberry liqueur that we just recently made, and I wanted to drink some of it. So this was a good excuse to well, do that. it's a holiday thing. It's a holiday yeah. thing as well. You know, sweet. I, I love sweet cocktails. So it was perfectly okay with me to have a sweet cocktail. So, uh, you know, you could probably make that and then take some whipped cream and go on the top. And then it's really a dessert cocktail. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Jen, for your kind compliments. We certainly appreciate that. And give that blackberry drink a try and let us know how you like it. And Karen, if you're going to make the raspberry liqueur, you can check out all the directions in our video. It's from about two years ago. So if you look in the uh, on our page for YouTube, there's a playlist category. She'll know what that's about. You can look at the cocktail playlist and the raspberry liqueur video and how to make it is there as well as the directions, the ratios for the recipe. It's, it's it, really easy. It's really easy. The thing is you just have to wait because yeah. it takes two months for it to steep. To get that really super raspberry yeah. flavor and color. You want to extract as much flavor and color from those berries as you can. And the longer you leave it, the better it's going to taste and the prettier it's going to look. So it's a commitment uh, to, you know, you're going to have to wait two months from the time you start the liqueur till you can really enjoy it. But once you start the cycle. <laughs> yeah, once the cycle, because we have a cycle going on now. In fact, well, you make lots of different flavor liqueurs. You make blackberry, raspberry, mm -hmm. strawberry, strawberry. I've done blueberry. Blueberry. I did mango once. That was really and good. And you did melon, melon, watermelon, and cantaloupe. Yes. And then also. Oh, and jalapeno. Jalapeno liqueur. That was really good, too. It makes a little bit of jalapeno in the and your margaritas. Oh my It'll God. It'll give you a little kick in the patoot. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and then of course you also make ginger liqueur, but oh, that yeah. is more complicated than the berry liqueurs because the ginger root has to be cooked on the stove in simple syrup. You gotta syrup. peel it and slice it and all this yeah. stuff. So there's that. But also it only takes two weeks. Yeah, it's ready in two weeks. <laughs> so uh, there's also, we also have a video how to make the ginger liqueur. So be sure and check our videos from the past. 
and we'll, it'll tell you every detail you need to know. I can't wait to see how much Karen likes this when she tries it because once you get the jar out of the cabinet two months from now, you're gonna you're gonna start another jar right away as soon as you taste it because you will never want to be without this raspberry liqueur. You just have to, you just strain it. And take it out. Yeah, it's really easy. You yeah. just strain it and through a sieve. Yeah. It takes out all the berry pulp and you have this lovely, lovely, lovely dark rich liqueur that tastes like, like raspberry. it tastes so like raspberry really you wouldn't believe it. Not artificial at all. It's no, like, it's mm. totally because it's all natural ingredients. It's really supremely delicious. Oh no, we haven't actually considered that. Suburban that? is saying that uh, Texas food fan uses a sous vide technique to speed up the infusion uh, because she makes vanilla extract herself. Ooh. We haven't tried that. We don't have a sous vide no. machine. We're running out of room for yeah, kitchen we've got, gadgets. Yeah, <laughs> we've got gadgets galore in this house. And our kitchen is, while it's very nice size and has love, lots of lovely cabinets, we are no. out of room. <laughs> there, is a, there is no room up here for anything else. Uh, so what we're operating on now is if we get something new, we've got to get rid of something that we have that we're not using because we just are out of storage space. The basement's full. The garage is stuffed. We don't have an attic. If we did, it would be full. But every cabinet in this house is full. So if we get new things, we've got to pitch something that we already have in order to make room for it. Yes. Oh, I know. Buying pre-made raspberry liqueur, especially if you get Chambord, it's so expensive. expensive. This is not expensive to make. A bag of frozen raspberries is not Some expensive. moderately priced vodka and yeah. sugar. You don't need to use Stolichnaya vodka. A popularly priced brand from the grocery store works just fine because it's going to be so raspberry forward, you'll never taste the vodka. Gordon. Gordon's, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. the brand. That's what we use. It's not the lowest because you don't want. No, you don't want to use like. Done low, low, no, no, uh, no, no. <laughs> don't do the cheapest of the cheap, like that pop off brand that you get from cheap mm. grocery stores. Do not use that. But, but a step up. A, a, yeah. a step up from the bottom rung is yeah. definitely a step in the right direction when it comes to the vodka. So let me make sure I said hi to everyone. We're just about out of time for today, so we want to thank you all for joining us. It's been so lovely having you here. We hope you all had a nice Thanksgiving holiday. We know we sure did. And it was made even better by having all of you hang out with us today while we made these lovely mm, cheesy leftover mini, mini, mashed mini. potato mini waffles. These are so good. And we have more batter. So once we're out of here, I'm yeah, going to yeah. make a few uh -huh. more in this baby. And we're going to eat these this afternoon for a snack. I think, what are we watching tonight on TV? Drag Race? We've actually... It's, uh, it's, it's a finale, right? No, not quite, no? is it? I don't know. We've it's been... Four... There's four people left. Yeah. I don't, we're not quite there yet, but it's close. We've been watching uh, old seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race because we didn't uh, start watching it until about three or four years ago when they were already several seasons in. And now that they're not able to produce any new content right now, we've gone back on Netflix to watch the original first few seasons. And I think we're on season, what, three or four right It's now? fun to see how it's evolved from the earlier <laughs> version. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun to see how the show was, uh, the more recent seasons that we watched, it was very slick and sophisticated. And then it's fun to see the earlier seasons before that, you know, where they had a tighter budget and they had to be a little more creative in how they were able to present things. And it's actually really fun to see how it's progressed because it's really super cool. Uh, Suburban says, if, they have an, if we have an Aldi, there's no Aldis in California that I know of. Aldi is a store like uh, Best Buy or Home Goods oh, okay. or one of those kind of stores. And they have sous vide machines. Oh, so, okay. okay. Well, you know, I know the best way to get a sous vide machine is to tell our other housemate that we want one. And he'll wind up coming home with the best sous vide machine that anyone's ever heard of because he always brings us the coolest of the cool stuff. Yeah, the issue is space. Yeah, we're going to have to find somewhere to put it. So... Uh, oh, yeah, we do have Trader Joe's here. Yeah. We do have Trader Joe's. Lots of Trader Joe's, in fact. We go there often. So, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen and non-binary guests, thank you so much for joining us today. We've been showing you how to make these yummy mini waffles. Mm. The ingredients are right below in the description section. And this lovely chocolate raspberry vodka teeny, the ingredients for this cocktail are also right down there in the description. So be sure and check it out. If you missed the beginning of the video where we showed how to mix up the waffle batter, 
you can just watch the replay. It's in about the first 12 or 15 minutes we showed how to actually mix this batter up. It's supremely yeah. easy. The biggest requirement is that you have some <laughs> lovely leftover mashed potatoes. Everything else is likely ingredients that you have in the pantry or refrigerator already. It doesn't require anything special. And it's very easy to do, as you saw. And it's super fun. And these are yummy. Okay, so thank you all, all of you. Okay, Jen, Karen, Suburban, Chef Alexis, all of you. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to see you all here today. And thanks for coming to hang out with us. We really appreciate it. So we'll be back on Tuesday, next Tuesday. And I believe we're going to be doing some unboxing. Ooh. Unboxing, hello. We love unboxing videos. We, uh, those of you who've been watching our show know that we collect Fiesta wear. And for the past about eight months uh, since COVID happened, we haven't been able to buy any because like many of you, our income was significantly reduced during the COVID crisis. The good news is that's changed for the better. And so we were able to splurge on a few new pieces to add to our collection. And they're going to be arriving in the next couple of days. So hopefully everything will be here. And on Tuesday, we're going to open all the boxes and you'll get to see right along with us what we bought. Is it in good condition? And what are we going to do with it Deluxe. once we've got it? The last box we got was like an elephant and sat on and it was ripped. Uh, one whole side was ripped open and stuffing was I was out. so worried. But everything was fine. Uh, I was worried. But it looked yeah, it the scary. box was thrashed. It really, you were right. It looked like it had been to the circus and they used it for the, the whole elephant act. Side of the one corner was totally it was ripped open. open. Pellets the, were coming out. The foam pellets were coming out. But the good news was everything inside was still okay. It was a miracle <laughs> from the goddess of China and pottery that it arrived in as good a condition as it did. So, okay, everyone, Mwah. we're going to go say goodbye cat. now. It's 1 30. It's time to go feed our kitty cat. She wants to have her lunch at 1.30. So we'll be back on Tuesday at noon. So we'll see you next week. In the meantime, have a lovely weekend. Yeah, Enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving holiday. And we'll be back again on Tuesday. Thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate you all being here today. Bye.